How's it going guys? This is Nick from Part-Time Pilot. Before we get started on this video on forces on an aircraft, just want to mention there's a link in the description to this video that'll take you to my website where you can enter your email to get a free study guide over 170 slides of really, really helpful diagrams and information to help you study for the FAA Private Pilot Written or FAA Check Ride Oral. So check that out. All right, let's get started. We're going to talk about forces of an aircraft and quickly I just want to mention that a force is a vector quantity so it has direction and magnitude. So this is a force, this red line here has direction and the direction of the arrow with magnitude x where this force has a different direction with magnitude 2x. So when we think of a force, we got to think of both the direction and the magnitude. So thrust here has a direction going forward on the aircraft, and then it has a magnitude as well. So for thrust is the force provided by the propeller blades cutting through the air. It's similar to lift in that the propeller is essentially rotating airfoils that are producing lift in the forward direction rather than the upwards direction. So in this visualization, you can see that the propeller blades kind of are shown as a small airfoils. And as they spin, they're creating lift, but they're creating it in a forward direction by spinning. And then you can see the blue wake going in the back of it. It's a really cool demonstration of how it kind of looks like wings that are just rotating. The next force I want to talk about is drag. Drag opposes the force of thrust, so it acts in the opposite direction of thrust or the direction the aircraft is moving. There are two types of drag, parasite drag and induced drag, and we'll get into those in a later video. But just like lift, drag increases with velocity. So the faster you move, the more drag you have. I like to think of drag in its most basic sense. We'll get into induced drag, but parasite drag is what most people think of. Um, so this is when, when you, when someone says something is aerodynamic, that means they're reducing parasite drag. So they have smooth surfaces, right? Like a shark or a sports car, like a Lamborghini. These smooth surfaces allow the air to pass over them smoothly. Okay, and they don't have right angles or sharp surfaces. I like to think of it if you stick your hand out of a moving car and you spread your fingers, the air is gonna be able to travel through your fingers. It's gonna be easy to hold your hand out there. But if you make it so that your fingers are, are all closed, it's gonna be much harder to hold your hand up there because the air can't travel through as quickly enough. That's because it has more parasite drag. The next force I wanna talk about is lift. Lift is the famous one, right? It's the magic that makes airplanes fly. It's the upward force created by the airfoils of the wings. Now the airfoils are the cross-sectional shape of the wings and uh, I'll show you a cool visualization of the airfoils in a wind tunnel here in a second and show you how it, it the air flows over it so essentially the air flowing over it is changing directions it's changing velocities and it's changing pressure is creating a pressure differential from above and below the wing which creates a resulting upward force okay so here in this visualization you can see the flow going from right to left over this shape which is an airfoil at an angle of attack okay so the flow as you can see it changes has to change direction sharply to go under it or to curve above it when it changes that direction it changes its velocity and when it changes velocity it changes its pressure the net result pressure is going to lift up from below which creates lift the fourth and final force on an aircraft that I want to talk about is weight. Weight is the downward force caused by the gravity that opposes lift. Okay, so you got lift going up, fighting against the weight of the aircraft. The force of weight is easily calculated as the mass of the aircraft times Earth's gravitational constant. Okay, so we have a constant of gravity. It's always the same force, you know, keeping us bound to the Earth. Okay, so depending on an object's mass, mass is going to have a different amount of weight force down on it. So the higher the mass of an object, the more weight force down towards the center of the earth. Okay, so the heavier your aircraft, the more lift 
you're going to have to get to counterbalance that. Finally, I just want to mention the equilibrium of forces. I kind of touched on this with weight and lift. You know, the more weight in your aircraft, the more lift you're going to have to create to counterbalance that because you need, you know, at least the same amount of lift as weight to be able to stay afloat. Uh, when thrust equals drag, the aircraft will have constant airspeed and will be neither accelerating nor decelerating. So, you know, when thrust equals drag, you're just going to stay at a constant velocity. If you increase your thrust more than your drag, you're going to start accelerating and increasing your velocity. But if your drag increases and your thrust does not, you're going to start to slow down. Same thing with lift and weight. So when the weight equals the lift, the aircraft will have constant altitude and won't go up or won't go down. But when the weight increases, if the lift does not increase, you're going to descend. And then if you can increase your lift without increasing your weight, then you will climb. We'll get into more details of all these forces in coming videos, so be sure to subscribe. And if you haven't already, follow me on Instagram at part period time period pilot. And be sure to check out the link in the description to get that free study guide. Thanks, guys.